Hey guys, it's Ryan again, and in this video I'm going to be covering the steps you need to complete to set up Endeavor OS for gaming on Linux. So I've recently changed from Manjaro Linux to Endeavor OS as my Linux distribution of choice on my desktop, but unlike the former, Endeavor OS styles itself as a more terminal-centric Arch-based distribution. In other words, what this really means is that you're going to be expected to use the terminal for pretty much the installation of everything from drivers, software and kernels. Now, of course, if you're not comfortable with using the terminal and you still want to use a Arch-based distribution, then I still recommend that you have a, at least have a look at Manjaro Linux, as that's a fine choice. Either way, let's make a start. So as always, the first step is to update your system. So Endeavor OS is classed as a rolling release distribution. And what this simply means is that your system will be frequently updated. And from a gaming perspective, this gives you access to drivers and bug fixes much faster than other distributions such as Ubuntu. So to update the Devo OS, you need to open up a terminal window and just run the following command. Yay! Now this command will do two things. First it will check if there's any updates to Endeavor OS itself, and then it'll secondly it'll check if there's any updates for any packages installed from the AUR or Arch user repository. You kind of think of the AUR as an unofficial repository hosted by the Arch Linux community, and it mainly consists of user-generated scripts that would install all manner of software that are not typically found in the normal repositories of Endeavor OS and for example something such as Mango HUD or even the GPU screen recorder. Although many of these projects are also available as flat packs, a universal packaging format, but it's beyond the scope of this particular video. In either case, once you've run the year command, your system is now up to date. So the second step in the process is to install and update your GPU graphical drivers. Now as of this particular video, there are three main GPU manufacturers that support Linux. You have Nvidia, AMD and Intel. Now the good news is that if you're using AMD or Intel hardware, then you've already got the latest drivers pre-installed. However, for NVIDIA GPUs, you will need to manually install their full driver package, as you'll only have the basics installed that will allow you to boot the operating system. But once again, this can be done with a single terminal command. So on the Lucius Wiki, specifically the installing drivers page, you want to scroll down to the section where it says arch slash manjaro slash other arch Linux derivative section, and then just run this following command here. Now the single command will install both the kernel and user space NVIDIA pr proprietary drivers. However, for obvious reasons, make sure that the driver you install does support your hardware first. Now, once you've installed this driver, you want to reboot your system. So the first step in the process is to install Steam and enable Proton. So the development and funding by Valve of the Proton compatibility layer, as well as its integration within Steam, is the sole reason that gaming on Linux has advanced so much in the last couple of years. Now historically you had to mess around with wine prefixes, manually install translation technologies that predate DXVK and VK3D Proton, and if I'm perfectly honest the whole experience was lacking to say the least. However in 2023 it's entirely possible that when you install a game in Steam, launch it with Proton, and in the words of Todd Howard it just works. Now a great website to check compatibility of your game library is ProtonDB. All you need to do is search, simply search for the game that you wish to play and then see what people have said about running on Linux. Now in some cases you may need to scroll down on the particular game page as many of the recent reports will be about running that game onto the Steam Deck, which in most cases does mean that if it runs on the Steam Deck then you're going to have no issue running it on desktop Linux as well. So to install Steam on Endeavor OS you want to run the following command sudo pacman-s steam once you've installed Steam, you want to launch it as normal from your application launcher, apply the Steam update, as is usually one to do, and then sign into your account. So next we need to enable Proton support for your entire library. And to do that, you want to navigate to the top where it says Steam, go to Settings, Steam Play, and then make sure you've ticked both of these options here where it says Enable Steam Play for supported titles, as well as Enable Steam Play for all other titles. Now you'll notice by default it will choose Proton Experimental, which is the default Proton build you want to be using. Now it is rare, but some games may work better with older builds of Proton, but that can be selected on a game by game basis rather than doing it globally. Once we've done that, click OK, and then restart Steam to apply the settings. Now what it means is that when you select a game, you can click the install button, follow the usual process, and then Steam will download that game as normal, and then once the installation is finished, click the play button to launch the game using Proton. 
Now, for some games, when you launch them, you may get a prompt to compile shaders before the game launches. And I do recommend you allow it to do this, as it will cut down on the stuttering that may occur when the shader cache is compiled in the game. However, you can cut down on some of the compilation time by navigating to Steam, Settings, Shader Pre-Cache, and then ticking both the Enable Shader Pre-Caching tick option here, and then also allow background processing of Vulcan shaders. And finally, if you're using the 525 or newer NVIDIA drivers, then what you'll find is that the Shader Cache stutter has been resolved by using a technology called Graphic Pipeline Library, but this does only apply to DirectX 9, 10 and 11 games and not 12. The fourth step is to install Wine and Lutris. I did mention earlier that the integration of Proton from within Steam makes installing and playing Windows developed games located in your Steam library as simple as clicking install and then play. But what do you do if you've got some games outside of Steam? You use Lutris, which is effectively a configurable GUI front end for Wine, the translation layer that allows you to play Windows developed games on Linux in the first place. And much like Proton, Lutris brings all the necessary technologies required for playing these games onto Linux and then simplifies the installation process. However, first, we do need to install Wine and then any additional libraries that any game launcher may require. The Wine dependency page on the Lutris wiki has a single command to install all of this. If you want to scroll down to the section where it talks about Arch, Endeavor OS, Manjara, as well as other Arch derivatives, and it's this single command here, which once again, we can copy straight to the terminal. Now, obviously this may seem like you're installing quite a lot of libraries, but chances are you're gonna need them installing at some point. Once we've installed Wine, we can now move on to install Lutris, and you can do it with the following command. sudo pacman-s Lutris. Once Lutris is installed, launch it with your application launcher. The layout to Lutris is simple, but effective. On the left-hand side, you have a list of shortcuts to install additional game services, such as the Epic Game Store, EA Origin, or, or Ubisoft Connect. And once they're installed, they will appear in the tab here at the top under libraries where it says games. And once installed, launch them as normal, sign in using your account, and then download the game and play them as normal. So alternatively, you can also install games or game services manually. For example, to install Diablo 3, you want to click on the big plus button at the top here, click on where it says search the Lucius website for installers, and then type in what you're after, in this case, Diablo 3. I'm going to select it from the list, click install, and then follow the process from there. Once that's installed, launch it as normal by double clicking on the icon. So in short, Lutris I find is the best method for installing games that are found outside of the Steam ecosystem. And although there are other tools available nowadays, such as Bottles, which have certainly gained popularity in the last year or so, I'd still recommend using Lutris, mainly because it's a tool that's stood the test of time. So step five is to install and use Feral Game Mode. The final thing we're going to cover today is a game called Game Mode, and this is developed by Feral, who are a company behind some of the most successful Linux game ports. Now, simply put, this is a small application that allows you to, to apply some forms of optimization when running Windows developed games on Linux. Although by default, it will only really do two things of note. First, it will set your CPU governor to performance, and then apply some process niceness and priority tweaks. Of course, the result of that is that a game launched should run better as it now has priority over your system resources. So to install Feral Game Mode on Endeavor OS, you want to run the following terminal command, which is sudo pacman-s game mode and then lib32-game mode. Once that's installed, you'll find it will be automatically applied to anything launched through Lutris, although you can toggle this off in the menus. Although alternative to enable for Steam games, you want to right click on the property of the game, and then in the launch options, you want to make sure you put the command game mode run space. Then you percentage sign the word command and then percentage sign again, which basically just means that whenever that game is now launched, you're going to have the optimizations applied to it. At that point, you're all done. So in conclusion, once you've installed the latest GPU drives for your system, Steam, Lutris and Feral Game Mode, then at that point, you've really covered all the bases to start gaming on Linux. Of course, with this being Linux, you can go further down this rabbit hole. You can also install monitoring software such as Mango HUD, change your CPU governors, or even compile your own custom Linux kernel optimized for gaming. But for 99% of people, this is a really good starting point. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, and if you did find this video helpful, then please do feel free to leave a like, and if you haven't already, 
don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thank you again, and no doubt I'll see you next time. Bye now.